the momentum of the ball, the convergence of the torque of the around the object. We don't torque. We, we're not linear. So when we're playing with an object, that object now is because its mass will torque and so forth. And that's where the injuries come from. You can blame it on the shoes. You can blame it on whatever, but it's those external devices, including the ball. But if you're stretching to, to counter oppositional to those, to those receiving ends of convergence, momentum, and so forth. Like I've just done range of motion. You know what I mean? Like, how am I supposed to catch the ball? My hands here, my, the ball's here, the, you know, yeah. guys dive or, and, you know, and then that's half the crowd. Oh, look at him fall again. He just likes to fall a lot. No, these guys don't like to fall a lot. They're seven feet tall. <laughs> yeah. You know, but people see that, but that's what happens is they can't handle that kind of, momentum and i'm not saying they can't handle it i get it that the boys are strong and all of that but it's the but, same with seniors one bad fall and you know that's it and yet what the heck you know but yet we do it to athletes like it's nobody's business yeah but i, I think i think that's sort of like part of the issue is you know like the there's that obsession with strength and being strong you know rather than still that that rotation that um that movement had been a, a bigger factor rather than just strength and that's what i liked with the um japanese picture that the dodgers signed i think i, I don't know if you saw it but i, um, I did share like a, a link to, to an article that I, I think it might even have just been an espn article talking about him how he refuses to do traditional conditioning approaches and like he, he doesn't take an approach that any American baseball coach would teach a, um, a pitcher to do because he does a lot, like he, he does a load of just throwing, but throwing with, with different devices and different weights so that it is constantly getting that movement in. And so like his, his flexibility comes from his ability to, to move, Very we'd say like less resistance and then more strength is developed by adding resistance in, but it's not, it's not working on flexibility and strength. He's working on movement and movement is the the principle to, to his whole pitching training program. And, and I thought that was great. But I bet you five bucks. He didn't get signed by so many places because they saw that as a rebel and they yeah. weren't, they weren't going to deal with it. And they said, carry on. They probably just look, looked at, looked at the, uh, looked at the, the outcome rather than the process. Yeah, and just, you know, oh, we know better, we're the coach. But also, too, all these coaches, no offense, when the guy's seven foot five standing next to you and you're pushing five nine, five ten, you know, you might be well off for the people you hang out with, but you're training somebody. Like, I didn't see one of them take into consideration, like, I'd almost have drones out there or something like that where the balls are dropping from, from their area. I mean, they're catching the ball up here, they're doing this. But yet, yeah. when they're going to do a lap, there's a little guy, and again, he's not a little guy, but next to these people, you know, these these yeah. professionals, these they're little, and they're tossing up. They're they're not going to get a ball like that in the game because Durant's passing to ball. You know, they're passing at this level, and yet they're yeah. they're warming up to a level of 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 little people. And I just I I just you know being courtside and watching all that, and I'm just thinking. How did they even get here? You know, because <laughs> it's just it's just a really rough sport. But half of it is just the way that they're taught to even train and get ready for all of this. And it's such a shame uh, that but, but, these athletes are going through this. Yeah, so so much research in in like a, a, a I must have read a half a dozen articles that have sort of said the same sort of thing. You know, like research papers from a PhD that's talking about the fact that the, the you've got coaches who are still coaching the same way that they were taught 20 or 30 years ago. And there's a massive dis, dis, um, delay in the latest science being uh, cascaded down and to be implemented at a, a practical level. He said like, you know, coaches just keep making the same mistakes that they always have. And, and, you know, like they struggle to, to learn and, and implement, the, the new science that comes along. And then that's why you see coaches go, oh, they're really forward thinking. It's brilliant. And then it, it's only because one person's done it and had success. And that's when everyone else suddenly starts doing it. But, you know, like th these issues are just like, it, it's, it's, a, it's across sports. 
Yeah. And, and, and also too, like, you know, we go back to, to Da Vinci and Michelangelo. Most of sports medicine is based off of lever joints of an elbow, which again, it is a lever joint, but that doesn't mean one origin of movement comes from an elbow. An elbow is there to direct movement. It's not there to create movement. I can't say, Ooh, elbow do something. And, and all of a sudden my body changes. And so again, range of motion and looking at levers and the biomechanics, you know, that again, the old school way of thinking, even just nowadays, the way that the muscle structure has changed, especially too, if, you know, we have to bring it up if people are doing juice, but when, when I say that they're doing roids or that kind of thing, people go, ah, but at the same time too, we've got people on oxycodone, we've got people on baclofen, we've got people on and those are even chemotherapy. Those are medications that affect muscle structures. And, you know, you, they're not taken into consideration the way that they need to be worked on. Cause I have a whole bunch of people that are in a rehab and I feel like a, you know, a salmon going upstream with, with these, with these waywards thinking of that these 50 some year olds are failing in the rehabs and they're trying so hard and they're not getting the range that this that 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 the that the person is looking for, and I'm listening to how they're quote like they have to put their nose against the wall, and climb their fingers up to this and this and you know if they can actually do it and and they can reach this level, you know what I mean? It's a success for their their rehabilitation. And I'm going, what what movement like. When do you do that on a daily basis? When do I put my nose against the wall to, yeah. the to put the to put the cups away? You know, uh, uh, clearing the sewer line. Clear, I mean, like when when do you do that? Yeah. And so so they'll go like, yay, I've made it. Now I'm on. I've got to up my drugs because I go home and I'm in so much pain, and and all of this. Now I'm icing. Now I've got the swelling. Now I've got this and. And I'm just like, I've, I've got to work three lessons to get them off that shelf of the swelling, the medications, the, you know, that and the pain. And they're just so afraid of now me coming at them when they just let this person just butcher them. And I, I, I don't get it. Anyway, hi, it's Michelle Turner from Movement Lesson. And I'm here with Scott Davies, also from Movement Lesson, Movement Lessons UK. Hi. Uh, welcome to our podcast, All About Movement. Yeah, no, I mean, that was uh, a, a great start to, to the chat. And I think that's what I said in episode one. It's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm a bit uh, fanboyish in, in terms of uh, when we get on this. And I, I, I love the fact that recording this podcast and just get to to chat and, and uh, get ideas across with you and stuff. It's uh, it's brilliant. And, you know, like listening to, to that uh, evaluation and um, about the, the experience of the Suns game is uh, fantastic. And, you know, it, it's something that I think that, that more people need to be aware of and, and need to take on and people who, who are looking at it. And, and, you know, like when, when we look at anyone wants to, uh, to find out more about um, uh, Yasumoto, the, the, the Dodgers pitcher, you know, th th there's alternative training methods out there and we've just got to be aware of it. Science is changing. It's developing all the time, you know, and it's, it's about coaches need to keep up to date with that and, and be aware of, 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 of what's, what's in the best interest of, of their players and their performance and and looking at, at movement specialists i think needs to be a key part of that yeah i mean i just did actually quite an interesting lesson this week on a child who's learning how to you know work with with, with a bat and then badminton and so forth um and i'm like well have you done your any hand balancing and they're like what's hand balancing i'm like how do you not know about hand balancing so i was working with the badminton today and a baseball bat and one of the things that's looked at is, especially when munchkins are learning how to do all these things, they emulate. So the worst thing that you can do, and we've talked about it before, but we'll keep talking about it, is taking a child and one-upping them. Shoes maybe that are a bit too big, a mitt that's my too big, maybe they're using the big brother stuff, or the child wants to be like, you know, they're, they're heroes, and they want to use that person's bat. Um, and, and they, they don't take into consideration the size, um, a, as an almost black belt, that was the biggest problem in, in karate is when the children are learning at a, at a young age, that front stance, 
and then they get older, they hit a growth spurt, and then they have to change the front stance. That's like the hardest thing to change on someone because they have really immature patternings, but but that's what they know all the forms and around is this, you know, more narrow front stance, and then they have to go further. So when I'm doing this lesson, the first thing I have to do is see how the person wants to respond. Most people put way too much strength into holding the the, uh, the object, and I don't care if it's a ping pong mallet all the way up. So what what needs to happen, and that's where I come into play, is I see where they grab it, and then I start with, with this teetering. Now, if I, again, you know, we were just talking about basketball, I would have a, a basketball, and I've done this in, in the hand courses that I have. Um, you just come underneath and, and you watch the, the how how the hand presents because even a professional player might have some techniques that he started doing when he was eight and he's using maybe a narrow hand versus that, that larger hand or beyond the ball where he feels he has to touch the ball. And now when they get so good, the, the ball almost doesn't have to hit their hands and they can work around it. Whereas as a younger kid has to manipulate the ball and that's why they don't get the range. When when a ball a player can actually d not palm a ball, but can manipulate the ball, that's that's where you get that power and the strength from, not from the force in the hand. And again, this goes a bit back into old school Da Vinci. Everyone's looking to increase his muscle structure, and this is why Tiger Woods wiped out his body because he was looking at the muscle structure, trying to get that force across. Versus again, like you know what you're talking about with with the Dodgers is having that that flexibility, but he plays with different weights of balls, different types of balls, because there's there's a a way that the the ball comes to you depending on weather, humidity, atmospheric pressure. If there's grease on the ball, you know, not to say that people don't cheat in baseball, but it happens. You know, things like that. That that's what they're after. Um, that's why they 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 rotate the balls out, but they don't do that in high school like they do in professionals. Um, and and there's a ways of doing this. And then once you have these variations on these hand techniques, now you have to look at the force. So especially if I have a racket, you know, and and I'm just clipping the ball off the top, there's going to be a force again. Now, do I use a very immature where I feel I have to whack the ball? Or do I have it where I can allow that racket to manipulate? And then I'm not going to get the hand injuries or, or arm injuries that, that people are used to, because again, there's so much force and they're looking, you know, like a, a bat is not a fly, fly swatter. You know, you, you've got to be able to, but because especially the ball at that speed is coming in. If you watch them in slow-mo, you'll see that ball kind of morph around and come back. We don't see that with the naked eye. We see just the strike. Um, and and all of those kind of motions that come involved are are the coolest things. But someone's got to again watching the Suns and the Timberwolves warm up. I was just like, who thought of this stuff? I mean, they're just taking these guys. They're not ballerinas. There's few sports people that need that range of flexibility. But for for rope poses, there's no rope poses in, in basketball. And this could be why they just lost horribly to the Timberwolves. But uh, it was a fun game. And, and I think there's there's two things in there for me, really. that um, One, I, I, I think straight away, and um, it, it gets me uh, thinking about the, the fact that we talk about touch so much. Whether you're talking about tennis, it's touch from maybe um, around the nets or touch from the, the different shots that you're able to play. It, it's, we're talking about that that control and you know the the not just from a an injury prevention point of view but but from an actual performance point of view um even for me i i, I think who are the, the the best players i love to watch and i, I know um last year I, I was in doing some work with um, an english academy and and the the scholars were all asking me um who, who do you think's the the best player in the world right now who do you want to watch the most in the world right now and and for me, regardless of the sport, it's the players that make things look easy because they've got that touch, they've got that control. That you know, the the, the it's not just force that that they're applying. It's 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 that touch and their ability to to manipulate the things and and get the ball and and feel the ball 
in some way. You, you think like the, the way that you're manipulating the ball within your hand there, you, you, you're sending uh, different feedback to the brain. You, you're making more connections. Therefore, the, there's more neurons and, and more things that your brain can access when it's coming in to, to make a decision, whether, whether you, you, you want to buy into the fact that there's no thought involved in a decision making, fast thought, slow thought, whatever it might be. If you've got that touch and you've got more connections and 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 you've got um, a bigger library of of, of um, memory to to access, then it's going to be so much better. And uh, again, I think Lionel Messi makes things look look easy. His touch on on the field, you know, the what he can do with a football. The same in rugby with Finn Russell at the minute. Um, I think back. To, um, I'm going back about um, 10, 15 years. I was uh, traveling around America, and um, I got to watch um, the the Colts were at the Texans, and 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 I got to watch Peyton Manning, and and that was something that I, I just thought saw with, with man and. It was like it was like he slowed everything down because he seemed to have that that extra touch, that extra control all the time. He, he could manipulate the ball and do things with with the ball that that other people just couldn't do. And it, it just seemed like to again to the naked eye, you, you think like, oh, he's just about to get absolutely smashed here. But he, he would get the ball away and, and he would fire and hit his his targets down downfield. And I just thought it was it was unbelievable. And, and for me, it just comes back to that touch. Roger Federer is a, another one in tennis. You know, it, it it's not brute force. Yes, the 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 big guy. Yes, the strong. If it, I'm sure if you look at the the strength testing, that they're certainly not weak, but they're probably not the 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 strongest people. Uh, on a squad, the, the the players that have got that ability to to manipulate the ball and and have that touch that that comes from that that interaction and and movement in, in um, relationship with with the ball and what I think going back to so, some of the stuff you see with, with basketball, um, I used to I always used to love watching Carmelo Anthony. I thought he was like that again, slow slow the game down, make everything just look very easy, very effortless. You know, like doing things that perhaps even the a uh, Kevin Durant couldn't do possibly. And and you know, bigger fans of the NBA might point out different things to me. But you 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 look at somebody like a uh, Durant, and and I got to watch him when when the um, the, uh, the Thunder Rover era. Um, Five ten years ago, and um, playing in it, I think like a preseason game, and uh, what what I noticed with with a lot of the basketball players, and, and you know whether it's a size issue, is for me they they look heavy. Yeah, the 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 big guys, the, there's there's a big mass there, but. At the same time, you know, like the the body fat index is, is going to be be really low. So for me, again, and you know, is it because they've they've always had that height? And they've they've been taught to to stretch in a, a traditional program, and they've they've got the skills, they've got the hand eye coordination that take them to the next level. But but when you with, with, when you're within that um, homogenous population where where everyone's probably similar height, like you said, that the coach is, is is playing it up to them, and and you know like they're they're a foot taller than than the coach who's perhaps feeding the ball. The, it's about adapting that and thinking about well, where where where's that art going to come from because yeah, I, suddenly they're, they're just using the, the the lower quadrant of vision and they're not having to, to look up and get in the upper quadrant and you know that that that, that changes perspective and I, I just think that the 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 the, the long the, yeah they've got the, those long levers but they, they look heavy and the the times they look like they're lacking rotation oh they're definitely lacking rotation i think that's why the the taller the player they don't last as long um, you're starting to see uh, a, a bit more gains on the longevity of a player, but like um, uh, I remember back what in the '80s, yo, uh, you know, oh, Yao, uh, sorry, uh, but you know, he he just you played play for Houston. Yeah, I mean, he he played in New York too, but he just um, he just the shins just, I mean, he just. I think his bones were just crushing him. I think he was just getting these these fractures going in because of the, you know, the height, the the issues, the health issues that they're going for height. But I was just shocked. Like like me, I would have like portable scaffolding out there, and if I was a coach working with these players, you know what I mean. I get it. Some of the 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 coaches or the physical therapists were were taller, but they're not that height. And I would I would have I'd be up you know, where, where I can work with the ball and, and get the visual midlines to, to start going on. And, 
you know, because the biggest complaint too is, is the defense and the rebounds. But again, are they warming up to have that upper quadrant? It's not just about jumping and grabbing the ball, but, but having that, that time there, but you can't just sit there and practice three pointers. Uh, you know, that's, that's one thing, but that's like one, one fraction of the game. Even if you have the opportunity to throw a three pointer, Again, I get it that they're looking for the spatial orientation of where they are in space to the hoop. But the guy who was thrown, because they didn't pick a ball off the ground, someone threw him a ball, but they were always looking down in warm up. You know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. when certain players came out, and and there's probably a problem with the Suns that they don't like each other too much. So they they had certain players out and certain players were in, you know, so keeping them away from each other kind of on the field, like, you know, I hate to say animals, but you know, when, when they're, when you don't want them to be, get aggressive too early in the game and stuff. And, and so they didn't even have people out there that were of the same height, working with each other, working on those visual skills. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was a real deficit to people, you know, playing at this level that they're playing for millions of dollars. And, you know, they're not just even getting the right warm up for their bodies, really. Uh, and I think that's a, the great thing about live sport when you can just actually go and and take that in and and watch that and and see where they're at and pick up on focus on things that you you just don't get to see when when you're there on on TV. But um, unfortunately, as I was saying before, it's just like the the same mistakes get copied generation after generation, and and it, until somebody comes along and and has, has that forward thinking mentality to to look at something different and it becomes successful, and suddenly everyone else wants to do it, but there's a big delay getting cascaded down from from science to 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 the the, the practical element, and um whether that's because there's a uh, the, there is a disjoint in, in between the the the, the two uh, contexts of, of perhaps research and science and academia and and, and the sporting sporting world. I, um, I couldn't tell you, but it, it's it's certainly something that needs to be addressed. You, you you're looking at the 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 injuries of basketball players on on the rise. You look at the the injuries, particularly ACL injuries within football, particularly women's football is a huge concern at the minute. You're looking at the increased number. I know pitches it's it's a it's a, a a daily topic in um major league baseball at the minute and you know perhaps we, we get felipe to to jump in on on one of our uh podcasts soon to to give us an insight on on his uh thoughts on on the increase in in pitching injuries but again it's it, you go back to to tiger Woods as we we keep increasing our strength and we're just looking to get stronger and stronger and but we're we're building up muscles and we're looking at very being very muscle focused and, and muscle dominant and a very like like you said before almost a lineal perspective to it and we're not looking at, at movement and we're not looking at it almost in a, in a in a 3d uh, gyroscopic manner that that actually looks and comes up with ways to, to prevent injury because we're actually used to performing those movements. Yeah. I mean, you really just have to, to look at first of all movement. So what you're looking at when people are, are, are working for a living when it comes to sports is first of all, we have to look at the notion of movement. I find that sports in general, when you say that I play a certain um, type, you know, like I'm a basketball player, that's like sort of like having a diagnosis of like I have cancer. And I'm not saying that, that by all means that they're the same. I'm just trying to say analogy wise, the approach. So it's sort of like, well, what would I do for a basketball player? Well, first of all, again, that movement evaluation has to be there just as it would for a baseball player or rugby. And and I think people have lost that that connection of, okay, why are they getting that good for a reason? You know, like if you look at Again, I don't care if you like Kansas City or not. Patrick Mahomes is probably, again, a gorgeous specimen to watch for movement because of the influence of baseball and football in his hand techniques. And two, I, I know Tom that Brady. touch again, touch. The touch, but also Tom Brady really, um, they're, 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 he and like Travis, the way they work well together, just like Brady and Gronk did because they they like the pressure of play first when it's just playing around they're just they're just working things out so they lose the game i i know they don't want to lose but it's like you know they're just working things out and when it comes down to pressure plays you know that, that 
Brady and Gronk were great. And Gronk was like, Brady's not playing. I'm not playing. You know, he, he just backed out. And because he knew that he wouldn't do well with somebody else and someone else would hurt him. Why would he get hurt? You know, he's, he's got the money. He's got whatever he, whatever was his goals. And, but again, that finesse that, that happens that you, when you can read someone, but it's, it's really when your movements are synchronizing and, and that release, you know, of a, of a ball, and then someone has to come in and, and receive it is, is amazing. And, and it, let's say tennis, even though I'm, I'm releasing the ball, I'm hitting the ball, I'm doing, doing what I'm doing, but that release happens the, the opposing player still has to receive it. Volleyball, I mean, there, there's still that that giver and receiver, and it's that connection. And yeah, you want to be overpowering to that person that they can't, you know, receive it back and 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 do something with it. I get all that, but there's still that connection. The ball doesn't just go and stop. Once there's a connection made, like a hit, you know, it goes off into you can call it foul left field, whatever you want, but. It's 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 not just the pitcher to the to the player. You, everyone starts moving around to the the movement, and again, there could be a, where the grass is off the turf. And again, doesn't happen in professionals, but when you're a high schooler, you know you're not playing on the best fields. You're playing in your someone's backyard. Those are where the injuries take place because it's not perfect. Um, you know, it's not like Rod Stewart's my neighbor and's got this perfect soccer pitch in the backyard. Um, but you have these connections that are made just like you've played with probably with, with mates when you were younger that were just great to hang out with because that movement connection was just so easy. But when someone doesn't have it, it's like a fifth wheel. You know, I was the person nobody wanted on the team um, kind of thing. I was teasing with Felipe the other day that, that I said, you were one of those people that I don't like because <laughs> you, you'd walk out and go to the bathroom or something and hoping I still wasn't there at the end. <laughs> but, um, but still to look at movement instead of the specific sport. And that's why too, a lot of professionals don't do something else, you know, because they're, they're not, they don't ski on the weekends or whatever. Lots of times it's not even, it's even in the contract that they can't go do other things whereas if you look at someone like Wayne Gretzky he was he was a utility player he did everything you know if the high, the ice was melted he was on to something else and I, I think that also what made him an amazing player I've, I've, I mean there's a, again a, a few things that you, you just got me thinking about there and it's um Firstly, go, going back to, to you know, talking about Mahomes, talking about Tom Brady, um, we've seen it with, with Brock Purdy recently as well. Th these are people who, uh, you know, uh, 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 have an unbelievable careers and look absolutely fantastic. But Mahomes w was drafted about 15th, 16th. I think it was either the, maybe the fifth quarterback taken in, in that draft. I'd, I'd have to check that out. But but you know, like he's outperforming all these people that uh, were supposed to be better than him because it, it, Brady was taken um, like much later in the draft. Brock Purdy was Mr. Irrelevant. It, it, the, the the people who like traditionally aren't meeting expectations that that uh, traditionally we want to see, but then five years later are proving those. Um, assessments wrong because the the movements a lot better the processes are a lot better and as a result the the outcomes are a lot better you know that the people who um have perhaps been overlooked for for whatever reasons but are actually performing a lot better because the they've actually got the, those movement capabilities in there and um you know leads on to, to multi-sports and i've um listened to some podcasts recently talking about i think it was the seattle seahawks and they just say they let the players go out and enjoy themselves and be themselves and if they wanted to go and do something else at the weekend they could go and do that because it's an expression but also you know, it's new movement challenges it, it's 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 new movements um the 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 problems that they've got to solve it and overcome and I've done some analysis on, on the movement lesson uh, UK website that, that looks at that and particularly the, the use of martial arts with, with within success in football, um, particularly Robert Lewandowski and Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who, um, and I know Manchester United as, as well, that they, they use martial arts as part of their um, training programs for their academy players, or, or they certainly have done for a period because that, that, that multi-sport, 
provides them new challenges. It reduces the the risk of burnout. It reduces the the injury overload, and actually gives them the 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 new things that that they can can work on. And um, actually, they've, they've found that that multi sports has been really beneficial. Getting away from the the ten thousand hours ten year rule that that everyone's became obsessed with over the the past twenty years. It's um, actually more about getting out there and experiencing new things and experiencing different movements and, and learning and and applying that. To, to new situations. Yeah, I mean, Kurt Warner, I mean, talking about, you know, not even making the draft um, and 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 he, look at him. He just, he just had it, um, but he had it because of just determination and he was willing to step down, do the other forms of football and then getting, being called back up. Um, Tom Brady was horrible, but we can even go back and look at Einstein. People are still upset with Einstein because he was a patent clerk. And so he couldn't have been a genius if he was a patent clerk. I'm like, guys, he was a genius because he was a patent clerk. He's at a job movement wise where he wanted to determine if they deserve the patent or not. So here he has a, a product that comes to him. He has to think of what it is, how it's going to be used. Again, these are all movement. Now you can call them visualizations and so forth, but he plays a violin. He does all these things. He's constantly like, you know, even the way that the, the trains came in and, and the clocks of Berlin went by. And, and that's where he came up as a relativity of time that these clocks and the, the way that they were, you know, this is all movement or if a balloon was in a train and the train stops, but the balloon doesn't jolt. But yet you and I do, you know, these kind of things that he he constantly his brain was is was being bombarded with all these little, little things. And then he just pictured a guy falling off a roof and, and went from there. And, and so really he became Einstein though, not because he, he has his, his theories of relativity, but because you had about a good handful of scientists that said, Oh, we're going to prove this guy wrong. And then when they started to prove him wrong, all of a sudden they're like, Oh, this guy's kind of right. And uh, <laughs> so he, he had that immediately verification from colleagues where they were really out to get him. They weren't out to, to, to support his claims. So, and then once he, he, he had them, then people were, were listening to him more because he just thought and processed so differently. And I really believe if he wasn't the patent clerk, you know, they say like the best CEOs are the guys who've done the mailroom. Cause he just, just was constantly on a daily basis. Does that work? Yep okay, well, I'll give you a patent. Does that work? No, nah, you don't deserve it. And then, you know, and it, and then also too, okay, was it too close to another patent? And he's starting to have that comparison, you know, of what's going on. Well, this works, doesn't work here. And, you know, the similarities and the, dis, the it, it just, it was so important for his brain. I don't think he would have been Einstein if he wasn't a patent clerk. Um, and so that doesn't make him Le futile. Learning, learning and adapting to the situation you know again and it's not it's, it's not linear in it it's not like something's just handed out you know he, he's got to work for it and he's gone and got it and then he's he's learned from each experience that he's gone through and um i think we can take that back to to movement again and um it's in, in terms of what you're saying before about um going out there and, and playing on on uh, imperfect pitches and I know that's like an argument that that's out there particularly in, in with, with football or, or soccer at the minute um in terms of the the pitches are, are so perfect that there's never a bubble there's never a mistake whereas the pitches that we played on when we were kids or when we, you played on 20 30 years ago there were bubbles and as a result, you had to adapt to that. And as a result, the the feedback that your body got was different because every time you put the foot down, you, you might be a different angle that that you, you, your foot's at, your ankle's got to respond to that. The, the brain's getting that proprioception and it's got to respond to that yeah. without then getting injured. And, and, you know, you might say, oh, yeah, well, the, the, the physical performances weren't as high going back. 30, 40 years as they are nowadays. And again, that focus on strength and, and getting everyone to be bigger, 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 faster, faster, faster. But also the playing in, in perfect conditions all the time, 
that it's actually taken away some of that challenge. Whereas in, in a similar way to, to Einstein, I mean, to look and to adapt and to learn from, from each pattern that, that's coming his way to, to, for them to then take ideas forward. It's the same way when we're moving and, and if we're moving and, and we're sort of having to stumble and the, the, the ground is a, a little bit, um, not not smooth then we've got to adapt to that and as a result the body's got to respond and, it, and it's got to come up with, with quicker ways to respond and as a result our counterbalance and our counter rotation has got to be so much better than if we're just playing in pristine surroundings whereby we're never going to be put off balance and, and we're never going to be um have our movement compromised yeah i mean it goes back to just human development no baby walks without falling down but they fall down like a squat. They don't really fall. It's not like we fall and face plant or that kind of thing and go, oh, that was stupid. Um, they they fall on purpose, you know, this down, up, down, up, that transitioning stage because they know or the system knows or body knows that that first step is probably going down and not across the room. And, and they have to go through these things. And more and more, I see parents trying to prevent that fall. And they helicopter and they hold and whatever, and they find devices and rings for these kids to hold on to. And I'm like, no, it's 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 needed. And yet at the same time, too, way before I got into this work, but when my son was so bad, because he walked, he was fine, and then he regressed. And so when he started walking again, he fell backwards and this and this. And my my line to the doctors was like, my son falls like a drunk. And they're like, oh, all well, babies fall down. I'm like, no, he's just forwards and backwards. Like there's no, like I knew back then even he wasn't coming to his plumb line. He wasn't falling, you know, coming straight down. Um, he was toppling over. And uh, and and it just, it just wasn't right for him. So, but he'd get back up and then he'd fall back down and get back up and he'd fall back down. And then I remember too, he'd have his sippy cup and he'd be like this. I'm like, no, no drinking and driving. Cause he just, he just couldn't maintain it. And, um, you know, it's the same thing too. At what point are we not letting our athletes or our kids fall down in a sense or do a bad job or whatever you want to call it that they're like, ah, you know, and, uh, I think one of the reasons my kids are great test takers is because of karate. Because every day they'd walk in, form number nine, form number seven. Okay, let's start from the beginning. You know, and so they're like, you know, and they just got so used to just banging them out, banging it out. Oh, you want this one? Okay, this, you know, which might be considered plays and might repetition or patterning. But they take tests like it was water. Me, I, I you know, if I had to take a test and what I do, I'd, I'd, I'd freak out. And I know my stuff. So, you know, that these these kind of a problems go into play. And um it, it is what it is, but I'm I'm not a good test taker going back to stage one, going back to that. And I think this is why sports are such a huge benefit to our kids, because they learn how to deal with with variations, you know, because it's never the same thing. And and then they can bring that into the academics. And and the, the there's research out there that um, outline that as well, and and the fact that um, you have actually no difference in in academic scores for for somebody who spends their whole time just dedicated to the 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 classroom compared to people who uh, student athletes who who are splitting their time between the the training ground and getting to spend a lot less time actually working and getting exactly the the, the same scores because they're still getting that cognitive development you know they they're still creating the BDNF they're still hitting the the IGF1 you know and and so that they've got that 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 brain growth that that's going on that the 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 benefiting from it there's the the research that that shows that um movement and exercise is really important for for cognitive development and i also then you know we, we go back to to the fact that you know talking about that the, the falling down with with a baby and um i think it's the the, the role that, that that plays in we just you know we, we need we need that that fall because it's a hip development and if we don't have that 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 fall then the hips are never going to be um never going to be pulled into position and uh, as tight they're never going to be um as good moving the pelvic strike will, will be impacted their ability to to move that they're, they're not going to be the, the the best sports people 
if they've missed that that development stage and the brain won't have got the the feedback that it needs to for, for some more neural mapping to go on that comes from from falling down and getting back up again and it needs that intensity for for the body to to be able to respond and to to fully develop the brain and that that whole uh, going back to to the adage that you know you 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 learn more from from making a mistake and and actually um you you create more neurons from from getting something wrong and figuring out how to do it than you do just from doing something and getting it right in the first place no it's also what's going in with with the connections that are going on in the brain is by failure it's again, you have to go back and this, I teach this all the time. I just, I know it from experience and from being around it with an infant, the, the true learning synapses that needed for cognitive organization, there's no bad touch. There's no good touch. There's no bad movement. There's no good movement. We're the ones who say, don't put those keys in the light socket kind of thing. You know, we, we start guiding our children to do or not to do, but the 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 lack of guidance in movement that we call sports it's sort of like we're letting the child's and again i'm not talking about parental failure but parents need to think about this you can't take a child that's been sitting from from two to five let's say on the couch with game boys instead of saying um un unless you're like the rain is going to melt you like you need to get out there it's not raining that hard or whatever you know you need to go play sun rain snow go play go play um and then it's always raining in northern england so right 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 <laughs> So, well, but, but, but we, 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 the kids, I mean, grounding for me was you're staying inside. Now grounding is you're going outside kind yeah. of, thing. but we can't expect a, a, a footballer or a soccer player, whatever, that's been sitting around for five years. So by these variations and failures, then guess what? Your kids every day is not going to be the best one out there. And that's okay. But again, look at what Tom Brady, if you look at Tom Brady, anyone from even high school would have said, this guy's not going to amount to anything but a warm up guy. And look at him. You know, if if we if he had let his future be determined on what he did at the eleventh grade, that he wouldn't amount to. He'd be you know selling carpets somewhere. And and again, please guys, I'm not trying to say a carpet salesman bad, but I'm just saying that even he really didn't show his stuff until he was in the professional league. Um, where he started switching over and, and getting into the lead lead pieces. And and it's necessary. It's just necessary to to allow those failures to happen. But because he had so many failures, he wanted so many wins and, and he wasn't going back. And you, uh, you get Tom hard. Brady, someone else who, who, who looked into sort of like the alternative approaches, you know, people mock him for, for sleeping in a, a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Why? Why do you think that guy's playing at an elite level at, at forty? Did he win the, his last Super Bowl at, at forty-two or something? It, why was he so injury-free? You know, why? Why did he have that certain level of ability above so many other people when when previously he didn't show? It's because he took on those, those alternative approaches that the the same as um you know that the, the, we're talking about um yeah Yamamoto the the, the Dodgers pitcher that they brought in this year. They're successful because they're looking at alternative approaches, and quite often that you know, as soon as they have um, a few mistakes or, or a bit of failure, that, that's going to get highlighted. Oh yeah, and it'd be mocked almost. But at the same time, the reason that they're being so successful is because they've looked outside of the box and and they're trying new things, which which I think is so important and um, getting out there and and not just following. What what's been done before you, but being in, innovative and 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 trying new things and um you know learning from from their mistakes. You, you, there's the Michael Jordan quote that I think was probably up in almost every single locking room that that I, I've sort of ever been in, and it's certainly been in in every sports college that that I've worked at. And it you know it, it's the fact that he's missed um, however many shots. The reason that he's great is because he's missed three thousand game winning shots in 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 his life, and it's you know. He's learned from from each one of the mistakes that he's gone through, and he and he's still willing to step up and take the next game winning shot. But uh, or the, the the classic in, in baseball to, to you know like be be a, an above average baseball.
baseball hitter to, to be hitting 300 means that you're failing over two thirds of the time that, that you're up at the plate. It, it's about learning from that and, and adjusting to it and, 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 and figuring out new ways to, to move, to, to respond to that. Well, Jordan went from the bulls and that accolades highlights to, you know, he was minor league baseball. I mean, who does that? Who he, he, most people's ego can't handle that. And he was just determined to offer his body new ways of movement. So it's not such a bad thing. No. And um, I, I think we, something that, that this, I find myself sort of going back to, to, to um, not wanting to, to sort of like let you, your kids um, fail and stuff that, that I bring up in sessions all the time. And uh, also when I've been in, in other sessions with, with therapists, I've seen them do it. And it, it's where they, they, they're just willing to, to move the child um oh. with without allowing them or oh, because the the hands haven't come into the perfect position that or the 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 the, the fisted rather than open palmed or the back of them okay like let them figure that out themselves i'm not saying let them be in a position where they're going to injure themselves but we, we go back to to that adage of uh, are they learning or they're performing if they're just performing they might be able to do something there and then but then the, there's no transfer. If if we're learning, it, it's it's greater retention, and and we're going to be able to transfer for that on. And, and that learning is so much more important. And you know, like allow the child to to feel uncomfortable in a position so that they can feel and figure it out themselves, and they get that feedback. And and that they, we're going to strengthen that 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 motor neuron, and and they, they're going to be able to move easier in in different. Um, we're not going to be associating that movement with a particular place. Place. we're going to step into a cognitive level of skill acquisition a lot quicker and and, and that's going to be really beneficial that that we've got to to allow them to to make incorrect movements sometimes to to work through and feel that and allow them to then feel what what it should feel like successfully yeah uh the number one way you're not going to get your child to walk is is by ankle placement and foot placement I just see it all the time. You know, they want the the, the parents and the and a lot of professionals want the feet five yeah. inches apart, parallel to each other. How many videos come up on Facebook? Yeah. And uh, every and, day. And, and and what is it? Well, again, if you stand like that protecting the monarchy, you have to go through psychological clearance like you wouldn't believe. That messes with your psyche when the beef eaters have to stand like that. It it just it's not human. And or I get it all the time, like, oh, what do I do about my my child's knee hyperextending? And I look at them, I'm like, well, yours is doing it right now. So, oh, you know, I said, you stand the way that you expect your child to stand. I said, you couldn't do it. It just, it's just, that's just, standing isn't a thing. You're getting in and out to go to walk, you know, you, but no child, you, you just don't stand. You know, like, we, we're, we're always, you know, doing something and, you know, fixing this or doing it. We, we don't stand as a species. It's just not the way it works. So, but. And, um, and I, I got asked in a session as well recently, is, you know, well, uh, when we're, we're looking at rolling, do we have to have the, the hands up or do they have to be down? Or, and it's like, well, it, it doesn't matter because they, they can, they can figure that out. And, and if they figure out how to roll with the hands down or they figure out how to, to roll with the hands up, that that's fine. If, if it's a three quarters position, but they know that they can tuck it in and, and roll, it might not always be the most efficient way, but if that becomes functional to them and, it, and it's not going to put any, any strain on them, then it, it allow them to, to do that. And, and if we can then help them to, to, to figure out a more efficient way, then then that's the way to go but we don't have to have we don't need to say right well actually no we're, we're stopping this i don't want your hand there Let, let's move your hands higher up and let's move because they're not they're not learning from it they're, they're ex, you know they're never going to be able to do it unless you're there with them all the time you know and and you want them to be able to roll over and play when, when you're not there in the room right right yeah it's true so well we can go on and on but let's save it for our next podcast if yeah. you guys any suggestions, let us know. We're open to comments. And you'll find us all both on Movement Lesson all over the internet. I'm movementlesson.academy. Scott, you're movementlesson.uk. Movement Lesson UK. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm, I'm going to finish with the the Michael Jordan quote as well because I I, I knew I was almost so I've missed more more than nine thousand shots in my career. I've lost almost three hundred games. Twenty six times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and miss, and that's what makes me so successful. And I, I, I just love it. I wanted to to get that right because I, I was talking before and I thought like I've not quite I've not done that justice, and I want to want to get it out there and and get it right. But um, yeah, it's. And he knows it and he owns it and he works with it. But, um, you know, for those of you listening that your parents, not give your kids a break, but find another 5,000 ways for them to fail. And that's when you're going to get that superstar. Yeah, exactly. Totally, totally agree. And remember, guys, it's all about movement. It's all about movement. (laughs) Thanks, Michelle. See you soon. Bye.